Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's Caramel Olive Mama bringing you some fall makeup routines today. Yes, I'm doing my little dance because I get real, real, real excited about doing my makeup. So come on, you guys, take a look. Here we go. First things first is gonna be, I'm gonna prime my eyes. I always do my eyes first because I don't want makeup falling everywhere. So I am listening to a little bit of music. You might see me bopping my head. But I got to cover my eyelids here. They get really, really creasy and oily kind of and will not hold eyeshadow if I don't put this on. So if you are trying to get into your makeup and do your eyes and stuff, you want to make sure that you have on a good eye primer. And this is by Smashbox. It's a 24-hour eye primer, right? Going in with my MAC 224 brush, which is a good blending brush. And the color, I'm into it. That is very velvety, dark red, burgundy color. Um, it's a great fall color. It's also a great winter color. I have only used this when wearing one other color. Um, I'm not even sure if they sell this standalone or not. I know it's available in the palette refill pan. Um, you can definitely check their website to see. And I'm going to put that right there on the outer corner of my eye, as you can see on both eyes uh, coming up soon here. I'm only working with two colors today, but every single time that I wear these two colors, it, it I just get so many compliments on it. Um, I'm going to bring it in from the outside towards the end, right above or right up under the brow bone. I am not able to do this eye as well as I do that right eye. If you ever see me, you'll see that my right eye is always looking real good. Now that's on your right and to my left. Well, my right eye is always looking pretty decent, but that left eye, for some reason, I cannot get that. I can't blend that. It's something about that eye that doesn't work well for me when I'm putting on makeup. But I try to make the thing work anyway, because, you know, you don't want to be out here looking crazy and busted. Now, there's a couple of things that you're going to have to do for me. And one of them is like, comment. and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for that little announcement. But let's move on. We're gonna go in with English Gilt. That is a pigment. I'm gonna use my 242 MAC brush. That's a large shader brush. I'm just gonna use that to pat on. Now, only, I'm only using that really honestly because I gotta wash the rest of my brushes. Like, they are in bad shape right now, okay? Like, bad shape. <laughs> I need to wash them, so I use the clean one that I have. Um, that's a good little, just a little padding motion from the inside going towards the outside. That is a very pretty silvery gold palette or gold, goldy silvery glittery pigment. Okay. And the pigments are always going to be very shimmery, highly pigmented. Of course, um, it's, it's going to just make things pop. I'm trying to learn how to work more with mattes because I've been shimmering since the day I turned that age to start wearing makeup. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm just patting that on a little bit, and you're going to see me come back with that 224 brush, and I'm going to blend from the outside, blending in, so that I can have that gradient effect. You don't want to blend, especially with a shimmer, from the inside out, because it may end up covering up that shadow that's on the outside, and it doesn't give it a gradient effect. It kind of just covers um, the outside and it, it doesn't seem to blend well at least that's the way that I have learned for myself and how I have to do it all right so I, I can blend this eye really good like I was saying before but the rest oh my god that that left eye just won't do right for me so I'm just going to keep making sure until I see that there's like a gradient effect to it then I'm coming over here to that uncooperative eye, y'all. Y'all know how I feel about that eye. It, it just does not want to do what I want it to do. I can't seem to blend it the right way. I can't even arch that thing the right way when I do my brows. And so, I, as you can see, I just took like a little baby rest on my arms to try to get closer in so I could see what was really going on there. But you still want to blend from the outside in. I don't know why the camera is doing what it's doing. It seems to get a little darker when I come close to it. But here, I'm just going to do the cleanup. This is the main, main reason why I do my eyes first. Because I don't want to have to go in and retouch up my 
foundation, um, concealer, and everything that I end up putting up under my eyes. Um, I want to make sure that any type of eyeshadow fallout, especially with shimmers and frost and pigments and things like that, I can go ahead and get off. Now I'm going to get that whole area ready because there's a lot that's done to that particular area. I'm going to prime it with Smashbox's 24 hour under eye primer. The layer under your eye or layer of skin under your eye is very thin. It's also an area, no matter what kind of skin you have, that can become very dry. So you want to make sure that that's 100% moisturized um, and I'm just gonna rub that out for a minute and I absolutely positively love this under eye primer but it is not a standalone situation I am now starting to use some hyaluronic acid serum under there prior to putting on any makeup at all I'm also of course moisturizing but here I'm putting on clear mascara because I'm about to put on my lashes off camera um, I am wearing falsies today I wear the Naturals by Ardell, the Dura Lash Naturals. I don't like the big, you know, packs of weave on my eyes. That's just me, okay? No offense to anybody else out there, but I use the clear mascara because the black is just too much for me. Now I'm going to go in and color correct. Under that eye that you see me doing right here, I have the most problems with this particular eye. There's hyperpigmentation up under there. As I told you before, I have a hard time blending. I don't even think my brows are correct <laughs> on that side. I only have a little bit on this side. And I didn't notice all these things. Of course, I started getting older and got over 40. I'm like, oh, what is this dark circle here? So <laughs> I just put, um, I color correct under this eye probably more than I do under any other eye. Like I have five under the other eye. How about that? I color correct under there. A little bit more and then I take a small mini beauty blender and I blend that out just a little bit so it's not so opaque there then I go in with the concealer of the same basically the same color as me which is my Estee Lauder double wear and I love 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 this concealer I'll take a beauty blender of the same one and blend this out now don't always use the live uh, tinted rise formula that I was color correcting with sometimes I use LA girl sometimes I use my matte conceal palette sometimes I use other stuff it just kind of depends on how I'm feeling that day what the air quality is like what my skin is feeling like all of that okay I had to get me some extra light because I could not see up in there trying to get up under this eye it was dark outside and all that good stuff so yeah I had to get some extra light now I'm gonna blend this eye out this one seems to take more time like more time than anything and I'm just at that point now where hmm, let's just get it back anytime you're color correcting I'll say this again and again and again whatever you're using to cancel out that color that's fine that's great make sure that you can't really see it but you always want to go back in and bring it back bring it back bring it back this is what I was taught and it has worked for me I always have to again with that eye <laughs> do so much to it but you want to bring it back with the concealer that is the same color as you are, okay? Or as close to your skin tone as you can possibly get. Once you do that, then if you highlight under that eye or put other concealer after you put your foundation on there, it is going to be a smooth, smooth transition for you, okay? Next thing, haha, <laughs> almost at the end, I am going to use my Makeup Forever HD Ultra HD foundation. And that is in the color Y508. Putting these dots all over my face so I can get a good even distribution. Um, I was doing it with the brush, but it just seemed like it was the brush was soaking up so much of it. So this is the foundation that I am using now. One out of the three that I am using. Um, and I don't actually have to mix this one with anything else to get the color or the, the shade to match me correctly. So I absolutely positively love this formula. It's nice and smooth. And I love the way it feels on my skin and how it blends with my complexion. Doesn't quite look like that in the sliding, but trust me when I tell you it blends. So I'm taking my Kabuki brush from Sigma, all right, my angled Kabuki brush from Sigma, because I told y'all my brushes are kind of jacked up right now. I got to go in there and get them cleaned up. It takes a while too. But I am patting this all over my face to give it an even distribution so that it's going to look flawless when it's done nice and even all up around my nose and of course over that eye area because i am not done with the under eye just yet right 
Um, it does take some time for it, or you know, a few minutes or so for it to just kind of blend in with your skin. The warmth in your skin makes the blending into your skin a whole lot better. Um, if you have ever done another person's makeup, let's just say a dead person like I did once before, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. A dead person's skin is cold and of course it does not oxidize and it does not warm up. So the way you put it on is, you know, why they kind of look dead, sleeping but dead. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to pat this thing out so it's not so saturated and wet looking um, because I don't actually set it with any type of powder. Lots of people do. I just, me and powder, yeah, I've done it for years and it just didn't look really good. I may go back to it. You never know. Your skin changes and as your skin changes, the needs for your skin changes. And so you'll just kind of like, like, you know what, let me try this again. Okay. But I'm, I'm pulling all that out. I'm going to go in now with my Fabi Fave, my Makeup Forever's Matte Velvet Skin Concealer. And I'm going to go ahead and put that little crown right there on my forehead. That's right, ladies. I said crown. It may look like just a bunch of streaks to you, but that's my little crown that I put in the middle of my forehead to highlight those wonderful places that the light might hit. And then I'm going to go here under my eye and put some dots. Now, I don't do mine like a regular YouTuber may do or someone else that you may see where they start right in the inner corner of their eye. I can't do that. I've got lines. I've got all kinds of stuff going on up under there. Uh, it's just this anti-aging like crazy. <laughs> That's what you want to call it. I have aging, so I have to put it on how I know. And I kind of take it all the way up to where my eye is. Then I'm going to go ahead, as that's sitting there for a minute, kind of warming up on my skin, I'm going to go in and contour. And I do that with NW55 from MAC once again. And that is their soft matte contouring, or it's not a contouring stick, actually it's a foundation stick. Um, it's kind of orangey, but it works out. I really like the stick foundations and, and concealers or types of sticks that people have that are kind of creamy because it's less messy, it's easier to put on. And I'm just going to put that around the perimeter of my forehead. I don't have a big one. I'm going to go ahead now and blend out. Like I was saying before, why I put it down there is because I want to make sure I blend that product up in there. I don't want it to crease on me. I already have little lines that are going to speak to you if you speak to them. <laughs> so I just kind of let my concealer come down uh, right above my cheekbone and then I kind of blend up into the eye area so that it won't be so packed on and just looking cakey creasy Ooh. yeah so I'm gonna blend out here a little bit on my forehead not to worry when I get done with this and I start to contour it will all fade in together okay so I'm gonna come in with this buffer brush I love this brush from Sigma it is a concealer brush I can't remember the name but I'll put it down in the description box love it love it love it it just kind of buffs everything out and doesn't give me a headache all right um, i'm going to go ahead and blend in my contour right there with a brush again from sigma and if you haven't heard or got a sigma brush get you some okay i'm going to use my morphe brush for this this is a great buffer brush to kind of buff everything in so that there are no harsh lines of demarcation or anything like that making everything look blotchy and crazy and just uh you want it to blend I am going to set my contour with Coco Naughty by Fenty Beauty. It is a bronzer. She hit the nail on the head when it came to bronzers. It's not something I've always worn. I just recently started wearing this probably within the last two, three years. Love it. Okay, it is a powder, but it does set any type of cream products the right way. For my skin, I love anything that's cream to powder. Okay, cream to powder for me. Got that done. I'm going to go ahead with my Laura Mercier's Honey, all right, setting powder, the translucent setting powder. I'm going to put that everywhere that I contour. It just brightens everything up for you, okay? I don't put a whole lot, just enough to let it sit and then brush that thing off. And it sets that concealer so it's not going to be so creasy or balled up or matting or whatever it is that concealer will do because it does different with everyone. And I'm not sure what happened to my my focus right here and why it was a little bit off but I'm gonna continue to brush that off until everything is gone and you'll see how pretty and highlighted my face is at that point yeah okay 
Now I am going to go in with Night Moth and it is a lip liner from MAC. It is very pretty. It's a dark, dark purple, reddish purple maybe um, color and it does really good. I know it looks real twisted right now and I'm going to fix that. Okay. <laughs> I am going to fix it, but I'm going to put that on because the lip color that I'm going to be wearing today is called Sin. That is also by MAC. I can't even believe I got this much back stuff in here now. I've been doing so much. But anywho, I'm going to go ahead and continue to line. That's just going to give me a, a guideline for my lipstick. And hopefully it won't be running all over the place. Even though it looks like it's running right now, I'm going to try to prevent that. Okay? This is the color Sin. It's a very dark, burgundy, blood red color. And it seems to be blending very well with that purple. Um, that Night Moth is a great, great lip liner for just about any color that you put on in the red family or the purple family because it will just oh, it will blend so well with glosses and everything so you gotta love that all right so i did have some little mistakes and i had to wipe off just a little bit and i'm going to go back in with some concealer and that's my estee lauder's double wear concealer and just kind of buff around to give that a clean 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 look around my mouth and to also help the lipstick from bleeding and running and going all over the place right now i'm going to set my face with urban decay's all nighter spray love that stuff that is a, a matte spray and that's my final look for the fall colors i hope you guys like this video if you did hit that thumbs up make sure you subscribe and let me know what you're thinking by putting a comment down there you guys take care